Welcome back to another unbiased magic review. And today I'm going to be reviewing Justin Miller's second at the table lecture, which was filmed on September 4th, 2019. And for that, I'm using here actually a deck of at the table cards. which These were sent to me for free after I bought a lot of at the table lectures. So um, this uh, lecture primarily focuses on card magic. And um, if you know Justin Miller, then you know something about him, the type of stuff that he puts out. He's put out thousands of effects. Not all of them are totally original to him, of course, although he claims originality. So I will say, even though the majority of the stuff that he's put out, I don't use, there still is a couple of little things that he's put out that I still use to this day, like his silky change. I really like it a lot. Um, so he has some good stuff out there. Um, and this uh, lecture overall, I would give it a positive reaction overall. The way that I usually, um, that, you know, when I usually go over a lecture, what I fi find is that if there's at least a couple items in there that I will use, then I would think that it's overall a good lecture. Um, there are some lectures that I wouldn't use anything from whatsoever that I've seen. So, um, yeah, so the cost of this lecture is about eight bucks. You get it from Penguin, and so I think that's about as cheap as it gets, um, unless you get it like in a bundle or something. But it definitely is worth that. Um, and he goes over uh, about 10 pieces of magic, is what I remember. Um, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on them and positive and negative aspects of it. Uh, difficulty of the magic is, I would say, probably intermediate level overall. That's what I would say overall. Um, if you um, have any skill with cards, then probably is easy. It will not be difficult at all. If, um, you know, if any of this looks like stuff that's like complicated to you, then probably not something you really want to check out. Um, so all of this is impromptu card magic for the most part. So that's good. There's not like any complicated setups or anything. You can just go right into it from a shuffle deck in use, which is great because this is like kind of like the kind of off the cuff type of magic that's ready to go at any moment, which is really good. So um, the lecture starts out with him talking about doubles and how to get doubles. And it's kind of funny because he specifically says not to pull up on the back of the deck to get to get ready for a double. <laughs> and he does exactly just that at about 23 minutes into the video later on when he's going into a totally different routine. He actually, I actually saw him do that. So it's kind of funny because he says not to and he actually does. So it, it is kind of funny. Um, but primarily, he does this thing where he just pushes over two, pulls back, and then gets a break. I don't really like that either. I would actually suggest you just use your pinky and just get like a pinky pull down. Because, um, you know, from here, you're not, you're not going to see the pinky pull down whatsoever. So I think that it's just the pinky pull down just totally uh, destroys um, the, the pushover or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so he goes over his first routine um, is... Pretty clever in it he puts a card down um, he has the spectator shuffle the deck then he takes it back and he just starts dealing until they say stop wherever they say stop he deals the next card down and these two cards will be mates meaning that there'll be like two red aces two black tens you know two red sevens so they'll be mates so that's a nice little coincidence effect I could see myself using that that um, that was pretty good I didn't think that was bad at all that was really pretty good um, the next section had to do with a four-phase sandwich routine, which if you do any sandwich routines yourself, you probably, um, you may not like it. Although I will tell you this, the final phase is something I would definitely use myself. Um, in that, what he does is this, is that he shows the sandwich cards and then he puts the sandwich cards inside of a box, inside of the box that's like sitting there. And then he has a card selected and it's signed, of course, and then it's lost back in the pack. And then he takes the box and he dumps out the, you know, he dumps out the cards that are inside. And of course, sandwiched between them is the sign selection face down. So I thought that was uh, the highlight of that part of the lecture. Definitely something I would use. Definitely worth checking out, looking out. If you're into any kind of sandwich routines, it's definitely a nice way to end it. Um, the next section was called One-Handed Triumph, and in that he goes over a move, a move where you can do multiple revelation, which I thought was cool. 
Um, if you can flip a deck of cards in your hand, meaning if you can just do this, then you can do that move. Um, because that's pretty much what you're doing with just a little finesse. You're doing this, but you're doing this with a, a little finesse. And by doing it, you can have three cards selected. And I thought this was pretty good because you have three cards selected and with one hand, you do a revelation, you do the move, you show another card, you do the move and you show another card. So you do three revelations and, and how easy is it to learn it? It's not hard at all because it's really, it's really pretty straightforward. Um, maybe like 10 minutes of your time will take you to probably learn that overall. He does go into a one-handed triumph routine using that, which is not bad, but I wouldn't use it just because I have a I have an in-the-hands triumph routine that I like. So not something I would use, but other people might like it. Uh, the next section was called Ode to Daryl, and that had to do with Daryl Martinez. He goes over a routine there using a blank card. Personally, I didn't really like it. I don't really like carrying extra gas unless it's a routine that's really strong, and I didn't think it was really strong. So definitely not something I would use. Um, after that, he goes into a um, ESP card routine, which was probably the worst part of the whole lecture. He spent a lot of time showing a live performance where the live performance went horribly wrong. He was really nasty to the person he was performing for because the woman didn't understand his instructions and she kind of screwed it up along the way. And he had to keep redoing stuff because she couldn't follow simple instructions because probably because instructions weren't that clear overall. It was a little convoluted. Um, the only part of that ESP routine that I liked was I liked the finale, which was that he has a token that he takes out of a wallet, which matches the last one. But in all honesty, I don't know if I would use it in that way. Um, just to let you know, to do that, you need to have this. This is what he uses in it. It's actually called, uh, whoops, that was upside down. This is Paul Richards token effect. And in that effect, what you do is you get the following. You get a envelope, you get an envelope that has a prediction in it, which is a token. And then when you um, you know you have the person think of an ESP symbol and you take out the token, there's only one token, and the ESP symbol that's in the token is the one that they were thinking of. That's the actual token effect. And this can be totally examined. Um, there's it appears that there's only one and one only token, and that's it. The, I'll tell you this, the bad part about this is that this effect token is gonna cost you about 40 bucks. And the reason is because this gimmick is very well made and it's made to last. I've had this for, I don't know, uh, eight to 10 years now. I've had it for a long time. And it definitely is something worth uh, investing in, especially if you do any kind of ESP magic only because it's a nice ending, you know, it's a good way to end it because you can have that out as a prediction from the get go and it will work with any of the five symbols. So that's probably the only thing of that ESP routine of his that I thought was even worth mentioning was, of course, was this product, Token. Definitely worth checking out. Um, I like it. Um, and um, so the next part after that was um, a something he called Tic Tac Reveal, um, which was something that probably most people would find to be the, the most valuable experience of the whole lecture, which is that he has a tic-tac box with one tic-tac in it, and he's holding it and the tic-tac literally jumps inside the box by itself. And the way that he does it is he has a card selected, it's lost in the deck like usual, and then five, five cards are laid out or four cards are laid out, and one of them is the selection. And then the tic-tac box, he hovers it over each card and when it gets to the selection, it jumps inside the box. So definitely, I thought that that was extremely clever, really good. Um, and he goes over how he accidentally discovered this principle with the Tic Tac box. And there's no gimmicks involved, really. It's just a Tic Tac box with a Tic Tac in it. And it's uh, probably well worth the price of the lecture. Just that alone is worth the price of the lecture because it's something that probably most people would use. You could use it for all kinds of things, not just with cards, which is really pretty neat. So definitely something worth checking out. And for me personally, I think it's probably the most valuable part of the whole routine for probably most people will probably find that to be the most valuable part because it's something that you're gonna learn you can use all the time. Um, the next uh, part of the lecture, he goes over a routine called The Legend, which he's put out before in the past too. And the legend, um, in fact, some of these 
pieces he's actually put out by itself too like that tic tac reveal he actually put that out too before just as a single piece alone standalone piece but um the legend effect what it is is he takes out um, a stack of bills that have a rubber band around them and there's a folded card on top and he puts it down and he has the person think of a card and then he he shows them that the card is is, is not in the deck and so he you know he hands out the, the deck and they look through it and they don't their card that they randomly named is not in the deck and then he takes the stack and he hands them the card that's on top counts out the money saying you know you could have won this um, if I didn't get your card and then they of course they unfold the card and it's the card they name so it's a very uh, Very very commercial effect. There's a very nice retention of vision aspect. It, it is something I would use totally uh, The one thing I would tell you though is that you do have to have the ability though to be able to palm off a card So if you can't palm off a card then probably not a routine that you're going to be interested in but then again, if you are watching this, if you're into card magic, then probably copying cards and palming off cards are stuff that you do all the time anyway. And you're probably not scared of doing any of that either. I mean, think about it. I mean, copying a card is, is child's play, really. So is just palming the card. It just takes a second of misdirection. And then in that one second, you can just top palm the card as you, you know, talk or whatever. And then, you know, you can you have your card or whatever so anyway it's definitely worth checking out if you are into card magic the that effect the legend and especially just because it has a nice little hook to it where you're just bringing out a stack of bills with a folded card and it's all rubber band together and you it's like a challenge you tell them to name any card almost like you know i already know what you're going to name before you name it kind of thing so that's kind of nice um and the rest of his lecture was not very good the next piece was called Mental Matches. I wouldn't even look at that. It's horrible. It's just terrible. It's an awful routine. Um, it's convoluted. It doesn't make sense. And then the last thing he's called the Butterfly Effect, where he makes a card kind of flutter in his hand or something, spin around. Eh, I didn't really think it was very useful. It's kind of like a throwaway type of little effect. Who knows? Maybe somebody would like it. But... Overall, I would give the uh, lecture, uh, like I said, 65 percentile positivity. Definitely worth checking out if you like card magic. The ESP routine, not something you're going to use. Um, although the, the finale with the token, the token aspect of it, you may want to use that with your own ESP magic. Um, and then the rest of the card magic, like I said earlier, some of it's really good, some of it not so good. You have to just be a judge for yourself. But overall, I would say that it does have a, it's definitely worth, I'd say it's worth twice what they're charging for. That's my own um, opinion. So anyway, I hope that you guys found this useful.